Okay, so I've just been sent a new case from 52Pi and uh, the cool thing about this is it comes with an ice tower cooler like the one I use on my main Pi. And uh, so I'm gonna put my four gig Pi four inside it. Let's have a look at what's in the box. So it comes with this to tighten up the bolts. Ice tower coolers in here, uh, case, and also a power adapter, which is five volt, three amp, but it also has a switch on it. And it's USB-C for the Pi four. Okay, so loads of stuff in here. Uh, instructions, got some sort of double-sided pad, uh, some cabling, some GPIO pin rerouting. One of these, which is interesting because I've just done a video on this, which is USB-C to micro USB, because this case works with the Pi 3 as well as the Pi 4. Uh, what looks like, I think, a couple of displays in there, and four of these acrylics, and this very nice looking 3D printed case. Uh, there's three bolts in here already. It looks like there should be a fourth one, but uh, I'll find out about that later. But yeah, it feels nice and solid. And I've got the ice tower cooler as well, which is where you need to start off because you need the uh, thermal pad first of all. This is the 52 pi cooler uh, that fits on the CPU. And uh, you can see it's got a fan already attached. I will use a fan in this one, although on my other case, I don't use it. And uh, the cooling properties are still excellent but I wanna see what the lights look like in this case. I may end up taking the fan back off uh, if the cooling is still good enough. So it says install the thermal pad. I've got three of them here. Just pop that on there. So I've peeled off the clear bit of the thermal pad. I need to attach the GPIO pins now. Uh, and this is so you've still got access to the GPIO pins when it's inside the case. There you go, nice tight fit. So you've got to assemble all these bits together and then pop it in the case. So. Let's put it this way around so you can see that there's the little screw mounts here which line up with the holes on the Pi. God, it's not going to be easy to get in, is it? I guess that's why you got this tool. Okay, so not a lot of room for the screwdriver in there, but it works. These aren't quite as easy to get in if you've got big hands. Okay, so it's actually easier without these GPIO pins on because uh, they'll be easy enough to fit in. So I'm going to take them off again. Okay, that's those four in. GPIO pins can go back on. Actually, I'm gonna fit the ice tower cooler first. That's gonna be easier without the GPIO pins. Okay, so I can pop this in now. Pop these screws into place. I can pop this back on now. Yeah, and that goes in much easier when it's in the case because obviously it's all held in place. So it looks like the display goes in this way around with the GPIO pins at the top. And it says to fix the display with tape. I'm guessing I use this. It does seem to secure it in place all right. And I've matched these cables up as close as I can. I haven't got a red, so I've used orange for red. But the fan cable is too short, um, so I'm gonna have to rotate the fan because I need to get those two pins, this red and black, on the front here. And it's just, it possibly would go a stretch. But I'm just gonna rotate this fan around 90 degrees so I can get this cable a bit closer to the GPIO pins. Okay, that's the last screw in. So now this bit, it's got a bit more room through here. And that's the power for the fan has just been attached. Okay, so I had to take the display off to get these pins in because it's super tight in there, uh, but I put it back in again, as you can see. And it says you can fix the other fan to the acrylic panel if you want, but I'm not gonna bother. So before I put it back together, I'm just gonna plug in the power. I wanna test that I've got the display on right uh, rather than have to do that over again. So let's plug it in. And uh, I'm just going to give it a test before I put the side panels on. Let's get keyboard in here. Okay, so I've got no display from the panel so far. I'm sure everything's in place. Yeah, orange, green, grey, and then a space, then black. Yeah, everything's all wired up, all right, but I haven't got any display. So I'm going to try that um, and see what code I need to put in. Let's switch into screen capture. Okay, so it's four days later. Um, frustratingly, the instructions were wrong on the website. Um, so the ones in the back of the book, I guess this may change. They've only just recently come out. The wiring diagram is correct, so I'll show you a close-up of that. And I'm all wired in, and I've tucked in the display. You can see in the top there. I haven't used hot glue, but obviously hot glue will be nicer. Um, but I've tucked all this up around the top here. I've decided to use the uh, Raspberry key, um, and the reason for that is because it's very easy to take out and put in. An SD card, on the other hand, is actually pretty hard to take out and in. It's easy with a set of tweezers, so you can see I've taken it out and pop it back in with tweezers, but with my fingers, they're just way too big and I can't get it in and out on its own. The other option 
would be to put a bit of sellotape on the SD card so that you can pull it out straight away. Um, but the Raspberry Pi key definitely lends itself to this build. You can see it fits in nicely and uh, it's very easy to put in and take out. And it's a bit faster than most SD cards as you'll find out in my separate Raspberry Pi key video. Other than that though, I was using USB boot with this Samsung bar and obviously you've got no issues there. Um, but I'm gonna boot this up from the Raspberry Pi key because I put a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS on here to show you the installation. But before that, I need to put these panels on. Did make me laugh, a comment on Amazon. Hello, I received the kit and I see that the side acrylic panels are not transparent as in the images on your page. Rather, they are of a white color. Could someone tell me why I received the product that way? Thank you. They haven't answered yet, but I can answer. Uh, basically, it's a protective cover. And I know this because I've had something similar to it before. I find if you get the corner of a screwdriver, uh, you can, there you go, just grab the peel grab the edge and just peel it down and uh, obviously you need to do it both sides and then they'll be lovely and clear there you go i have actually done exactly the same and left them on on uh, my cluster case uh, in the past i hadn't realized they came off and i think i might have done the one for the pi 3 because this one's got bigger cutouts so i think this is probably the one to use these panels add little acrylic feet to the bottom so you can see they come down past the bottom of the case there you go, so that's both sides on. It is a very nice looking case. Okay, so let's switch on. And you can see the nice way that the lights reflect through the cooler. And if I spin it around, you can see the fan. It does look really nice at this, and even the edges kind of light up as well. So the instructions take you to this site, and you have to search for the SKU. So K-0595. Uh, and you can see the product comes up. But this method didn't work for me. Um, and uh, so the new link I've got is this one here and I'll put it in the description. So I've copied it here. So it more relates to just the screen really. So let's go to that. And I'll also put all the code there as well. So control alt T to open a terminal and let's copy this in. Now I thought the first bit might be enabling I2C, but it doesn't seem to enable it. Um, so we'll do that in Raspberry config in a minute. I'll just see if it does exactly the same as it did before. So let's just copy each line in. And we'll say yes to that. And the next bit. And yes to that. But weirdly in the guide, uh, if we look on the left hand side, it directs you to download this code, but then it gets you to download it here anyway. So I don't quite know what this bit is about. Let's copy the next bit and paste that in, and the next part, and this sudo dash hpip3 install. Now this bit I put in extra, this bit with the lines, because this is what happened when I tried it. So if I copy this and paste this in, uh, I've also put this line in because this tests the uh, GPIO pins. There you go, so you can see could not open file. Uh, I got this information from this uh, link, and again, I'll put this in the description, the DIYlife.com. Uh, it's how to add it to uh, Bullseye. I'm using Buster, the older version, just because at the moment it is more reliable and more compatible. Um, but uh, there is a guide how to install on Bullseye, but it is a slightly different screen. So when I tried it, it didn't work for me, but I got this tip here, the I2C detect about the GPIO pins. So now what we need to do is sudo raspi-config and just enable those. Go down to interface, go down to I2C, and yes, and OK. I think that's all you need to do. I don't think you need to reboot. Uh, so let's try that line again. Yeah, this is what the guide, the DIY life guide, uh, pointed me to. So this is showing that it's correctly connected. So now we can try this bit of code and paste that example in. So if I spin this around, you can see the display is off at the moment. But if I now press return, you can see it's coming on with this spinning block, which is pretty cool, but it also comes with a load more demos. Don't worry about the scan lines that you can see. You don't see those with the naked eye. Here's the animated GIF one. Again, ignore the scan lines, you don't see them. This is Bounce. This is Carousel. You can see it's got an analog clock and the date and various different things come along. This is Chroma, scrolling pixel art. 
Probably one of my favourite ones, Space Invaders, very good for a retro pie build. There are more, but I figured I'd end in Jet Set Willy. And as you can see, there's loads more in there as well. I couldn't find one that showed the temperature, which would be particularly nice. Uh, but I did find in this article up here, so the one that I've linked from the DIY life, let's just put that in the browser. Yeah, the OLED stats display was rather nice. So IP address, CPU usage, temperature, memory, disk usage. And this shows how to install it. But again, in Bullseye, I think there's a version for Buster, but I'm not sure. I think the screen is slightly different, so I'm not sure if it actually works. I'll probably have a go at it at some point. Uh, now I've got the screen up and running. Yeah, loads of detailed information in there. And there's also a way of getting it to start up on boot. So rather than have to launch it separately, uh, it is, yeah, automating the script to run on startup. So that's worth having a look at. So thanks very much to 52Pi for sending me this rather cool case. Uh, it's really nice to have another ice tower cooler. I probably will end up using it silent, which is a shame because it means you lose the LED lights. But uh, I do like a silent Pi. And the cooling is so good on this anyway. And just released, there is another version of this, the K0612, which is a mini tower NAS. And so if we scroll down, we can see it a bit closer inside. You've got this little USB 3 adapter and there is a drive. Is it an M.2? Yeah, so an M.2 uh, 2280 drive uh, that can go in there as well. Yeah, very, very nice. Okay, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.